Oh man. I think uh the trolls kinda hit me hard hard on Twitter today. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll live. I have many Twitter accounts. More than you could possibly imagine. But I think I'll live. I'll, I'll be alright. I want to do this video. I want to give uh, my thoughts on the Obama speech. I haven't looked at the speech yet. But I'm going to look at the look at it for the first time. And you're going to watch my reaction on camera. As I watch Obama's speech for the first time. Because I haven't seen the speech yet. But first off, before I do that, I want to take a moment and uh, hold on a second. I want to take a moment first and. A special message from my good buddy from Arizona, my good pastor friend, Josh Ferenstein. He's got something to say. Let's see what he's got to say. This is Josh Ferenstein here. I'm going to risk my life over the next 60 seconds to prove to you that Allah is actually Satan. You know, there's a lot of people in today's culture. It's actually like two minutes. Allah is the same God of the Bible. That's not true. In fact, do you realize that the Quran actually says that Allah is a deceiver? And yet the God of the Bible, well, cannot lie. Do you guys realize that Islam, the current bloodbath taking place around the world, is actually prophesied in the book of Revelation? Do you realize that Islam preaches violence and hatred while the Bible preaches love? Think about this, ladies and gentlemen, but here's the greatest one. Do you realize that the Quran itself actually admits to the fact that Allah is Satan? Look at what the prophet Muhammad said. The most awful name in Allah's sight on the day of resurrection will be that of a man calling himself the king of kings. That means that on the day of resurrection, the day of reckoning, that Allah's greatest enemy is going to be a man calling himself the king of kings. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy. Until the day of the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. That's 1 Timothy. Then look at the book of, Re of Revelation chapter 17. These shall make war with the Lamb Jesus, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For Jesus is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. It goes on to say, and he, Jesus, has a name on his vesture and on his thigh written that is the king of kings and the lord of lords you see allah knows exactly who jesus christ is and he hates him and he hates us why well because we do not fear allah for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so there we go 60 seconds we proved allah is actually satan Wake up this generation, take a moment, share the video, and enlighten somebody else. God bless. Have a beautiful day. God bless you too, my good pastor buddy, uh, Josh Ferenstein. He's right. He is right. And that's the reason our government fears us, and that's the reason that, our, that, you know, that people fear Christians. People say that Christians are bigots and whatever, but the actual truth is they fear us. You know, my trollers on Twitter, my, you know, I'm not talking about one person. I'm talking about many trollers that I have. They actually fear people like me because they're afraid of the truth. Because the truth will so set you free. I mean, are they afraid to be free? I, I don't know exactly, but... The truth is powerful. It's so powerful that people are afraid of it. And because of that, people are afraid of Christianity and afraid of Christians. Because we speak the truth. They're, they're afraid. They, people can't fucking handle it. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's get to the next thing. Obama speech. And I'm not going to judge. I'm just going to get my thoughts as it goes. Here we go. Good evening. On Wednesday.
Wednesday, 14 Americans were killed as they came together to celebrate the holidays. They were taken from family and friends who loved them deeply. They were white and black, Latino and Asian, immigrants and American born, moms and dads, daughters and sons. Each of them served their fellow citizens, and all of them were part of our American family. Tonight I want to talk with you about this tragedy, the broader threat of terrorism, and how we can keep our country safe. The FBI is still gathering the facts about what happened in San Bernardino, but here's what we know. The victims were brutally murdered and injured by one of their co-workers and his wife. So far, we have no evidence that the killers were directed by a terrorist organization overseas, or that they were part of- I got evidence for you. The one guy went to Saudi Arabia multiple times. Is that not clear enough? And the one lady, the bitch, she admitted to giving her allegiance to ISIS. That's clear enough evidence for me. I got more evidence than the president, allegedly. ...of a broader conspiracy here at home. But it is clear that the two of them have, had gone down the dark path of radicalization, embracing a... Uh, I, he, I bet not one time is he going to say Islam. He said dark path of radicalization. Radicalization of what? Speak the damn truth. ...interpretation of Islam that calls for war against America. Oh, he did say West. Islam, my bad. It stockpiled hey, I'll admit my fault. ...ammunition and pipe bombs. So this was an act of terrorism. I don't think they used pipe bombs in attack. Well, he admits it was terrorism. Okay, good point there. ...designed to kill innocent people. Our nation has been at war with terrorists since Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 Americans on 9-11. In the process, we've hardened our defenses, from airports to financial centers to other... No, 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 no. You took away our freedoms. From TSA pedophilia, when they want to feel our kids and touch everybody and watch us naked through body scanners... Through the Patriot Act, which gives up, which gives up our freedoms, I'm not willing to sacrifice my freedom for a bunch of terrorist killers. I'm not willing to do that. Structure. Intelligence and law enforcement agencies have disrupted countless plots here and overseas, and worked around the clock to keep us safe. Bullshit. Our military and counterterrorism professionals have relentlessly pursued terrorist networks overseas disrupting safe havens in several different countries, killing Osama bin Laden, and decimating Al-Qaeda's leadership. Osama bin Laden died in 2003 of kidney disease. You can't bullshit me. They, well, we buried his body in the sea. Ah, wrong answer. Over the last few years, however, the terrorist threat has evolved into a new phase. As we've become better at preventing complex, multifaceted ISIS is Al-Qaeda, by the way. Same group. Terrorists turn to less complicated acts of violence, like the mass shootings that are all too common in our society. It is this type of attack that we saw at Fort Hood in 2009, in Chattanooga earlier this year, and now in San Bernardino. And as groups like ISIL grew stronger ISIS. amidst the chaos of war in Iraq and then Syria, and as the internet erases the distance between countries, we see growing efforts by terrorists to poison the minds of people like the Boston Marathon bombers and the San Bernardino killers. For seven years, I have confronted this evolving threat each and every morning in my intelligence briefing. No, you haven't. And since the day I took this office, I have authorized U.S. forces to take out terrorists abroad precisely because I know how real the danger is. Then why did you buy a bill out of Iraq? Chief, I have no greater responsibility than the security of the American people. As a father to two young daughters who are the most One of them which hates you. Life, I know that we see ourselves with friends and co-workers at a holiday party like the one in San Bernardino. I know we see our kids in the faces of the young people killed in Paris. And I know that after so much war... The young people killed in Paris were attending a uh, death rock concert, Worship and Satan, called... Eagle death metal or some shit. Keep that in mind. I'm not saying that everybody got killed in Paris was uh, wrong. I'm not saying everybody, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that the people deserved that what happened to the people in Paris deserved it. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm saying 
just keep in mind that the people that, that at that rock concert were worshiping a satanic god. Uh, uh, how do I say this? It was a uh, it was a, a uh, rock band worshiping the devil. I'm not saying they deserved it. Absolutely not. Absolutely no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Americans are asking whether we are confronted by a cancer that has no immediate cure. Well, here's what I want you to know. The threat from terrorism is real, but we will overcome it. We will destroy... <laughs> we ain't gonna overcome it with you in office, buddy. Destroy ISIL and any other organization that... We're not gonna ours. overcome it with you in office, buddy. Our success won't depend on tough talk or abandoning our values or giving in to fear. That's what groups like ISIL are hoping for. Instead, we will prevail by being strong and smart. Let us have our guns. Resilient and relentless. And by drawing upon every aspect of American power. Here's how. First, our military will continue to hunt down terrorist plotters in any country where it is necessary. In Iraq and Syria, airstrikes are taking out ISIL leaders. Heavy weapons, oil tankers, infrastructure. And since the attacks in Paris, our closest allies, including France, Germany, and the United Kingdom, have ramped up their contributions to our military campaign, which will help us accelerate our effort to destroy ISIL. Second, we will continue to provide training and equipment to tens of thousands of Iraqi and Syrian forces fighting ISIL on the ground so that we take away their safe havens. In both countries, we're deploying special operations forces who can accelerate that offensive. We've stepped up this effort since the attacks in Paris, and we'll continue to... He just said that we'll go to any country. Are you willing to go to Saudi Arabia? Because that's where a lot of terrorists are from. Are you willing to go to the Horn of Africa? Because that's where a lot of terrorists are from. He said any country. Did he not say that? You heard it, people. He said any country. He said it. Oh, no, we can't go to Saudi Arabia. We got oil fields there. Oh, no, we can't go to Turkey, who has terrorists. Nah, he, he said any country, did he not? Did he not? You heard it. You heard it. Be a man of your word, dictator. More in approaches that are working on the ground. Third, we're working with friends and allies to stop ISIL's operations. No, you're not. Disrupt plots, cut off their finances. Then why aren't we working with Russia? From recruiting more fighters. Why are we not working Since with Russia? In Paris, we've surged in intelligence sharing with our European allies. We're working with Turkey to seal its border with Syria. <laughs> and we are cooperating with Muslim-majority countries. That's a joke. And with our Muslim communities here at home to counter the vicious ideology that ISIL promotes online. Fourth, with American leadership, the international community has begin, begun to establish a process and timeline to pursue ceasefires and a political resolution to the Syrian Doing so will allow the Syrian people and every country, including our allies, but also countries like Russia, to focus on the common goal of destroying ISIL, a group that threatens us all. This is our strategy to destroy ISIL. It is designed and supported by our military commanders and counterterrorism experts, together with 65 countries that have joined an American-led coalition. And we 65 countries can't destroy this little group? When additional steps are needed to get 65 the countries have joined? 65 countries can't destroy this terrorist organization? 65 countries? Are you fucking kidding me? Something is not right here, people. 65 countries can't destroy this terrorist organization? 65! This guy's lying to his fucking teeth. That's why I've ordered the Departments of State and Homeland Security to review the visa waiver program under which the female terrorist in San Bernardino originally came to this country. And that's why I will urge high-tech and law enforcement leaders to make it harder for terrorists to use technology to escape from justice. Now, how now, are you planning on doing that? At home, we have to work together to address the challenge. There are several steps that Congress should take right away. To begin with, Congress should act to make sure no one on a no-fly list is able to buy a gun. What could 
possibly be the argument for allowing a terrorist suspect to buy a semi-automatic weapon? This is a matter of national... The real question is, how are you going to end up on the no-fly list? By being a right-wing conservative member of the Tea Party? Security. We also need to make it harder for people to buy powerful assault weapons, like the ones that were used in San Bernardino. People in general? Some who reject any gun safety measures. But the fact is that our intelligence and law enforcement agencies, no matter how... We need to make it harder for people to buy... Assault rifles like the one used in the... No, 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 no. So, so people in general can't protect themselves? Is that what he's saying? That's what he just said, right? We're going to make it for the general population, which is, you know, me and you, the taxpayer, to not buy these guns to protect ourselves. So we have to take the hit. Because of them. They are. Cannot identify every would-be mass shooter, whether that individual is motivated by That's ISIL why we all need to be armed. Hateful ideology. What we can do and is arm ourselves. Is make it harder for them to kill. Next, we should put in place stronger screening for those who come to America without a visa, so that we can take a hard look at whether they've traveled to war zones. And we're working with members of both parties in Congress to do exactly I that. I got an idea. I got an idea. You don't have a fucking visa? You ain't coming here. That, that, that's a better idea. No visa? Get out. If Congress believes, as I do, that we are at war with ISIL, it should go ahead and vote to authorize the continued use of military force against these terrorists. For over a year, I have ordered our military to take thousands of airstrikes against ISIL targets. Thousands? I, I think it's time I, for Congress to, that. to demonstrate that the American people are united and committed to this fight. Uh-huh. My fellow Americans, these are the steps... You motherfucker! Don't you call me your fellow American when you're not even American! You have a fake birth certificate, you motherfucker! Don't you dare call me fellow American! Don't do that again! together to defeat the terrorist threat. Let me now say a word about what we should not do. We should not be drawn once more into a long and costly ground war in Iraq or Syria. That's what groups like ISIL want. They know they can't defeat us on the battlefield. ISIL fighters were part of the insurgency that we faced in Iraq, but they also know that if we occupy foreign lands, they can maintain insurgencies for years, killing thousands of our troops, draining our resources, and using our presence to draw new recruits. The strategy that we are using now, airstrikes, special forces. <sighs> you know what, you know, the problem with Iraq was we pulled out. You know what the problem with Vietnam was? We pulled out. Well, Vietnam was just a big slaughter. And so is pretty much Iraq. If I'm president of the United States, I'm going to have 100,000 troops in Syria killing ISIS. 100,000. Like it or not. I don't give a damn. And working with local forces who are fighting to regain control of their own country. That is how we'll achieve a more sustainable victory. And it won't require us sending a new generation of Americans overseas to fight and die for another decade on foreign soil. Here's what else we cannot do. We cannot turn against one another by letting this fight be defined as a war between America and Islam. That too is what groups like ISIS... He makes a good point though. We can't turn against each other because of Islam. Right wing versus left wing. Liberal versus conservative. We need to come together as Americans. Republican versus Democrat. You know, whatever. Let's come up again, you know, forget all the damn liberal versus conservative, Democrat versus Republican, all that bullshit. We are all Americans. We are all Americans. And we need to come together, okay? You know what these terrorists want? They want us to fight. They want us to fight. They want the liberals and conservatives to fight each other. They want Democrats and Republicans to fight each other. That's what the terrorists want. Let's focus on the real enemy. And the real enemy is the jihadist. Okay? That's the real enemy. The real enemy isn't the left-wing liberals. The real enemy is 
the jihads. I mean, the left-wing liberals are brainwashed, but they're not the real enemy. They're just stupid. So what? ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers. Yes, they do. Of a cult of death. And they account for a tiny fraction of a more than a billion Muslims around the world. Including millions of patriotic It's more than a tiny Americans fraction. Reject their hateful ideas. I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. Now, now hold on. I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. Absolutely not. I'm not saying that, you know, all Muslims... I've had some good Muslims. They're not all bad people. But he's saying a tiny fraction of the one billion... Uh, I think it's bigger than that. The vast majority of terrorist victims around the world are Muslim. If we're to succeed in defeating terrorism, we must enlist Muslim communities as some of our strongest allies, rather than push them away through suspicion and hate. That does not mean denying the fact that an extremist ideology has spread within some Muslim communities. It's a real problem that Muslims must confront without excuse. Muslim leaders here and around the globe have to continue working with us to decisively and unequivocally reject the hateful ideology that groups like ISIL and Al-Qaeda promote. To speak out against not just acts of violence, but also those interpretations of Islam that are incompatible with the values of religious tolerance, mutual respect, and human dignity. But just as it is the responsibility of Muslims around the world to root out this guy. You just seen my Josh Ferristein video, right? Who do you who do you trust more? Do you trust this idiot more? Or should, do you trust Josh Ferristein more? Who's more truthful? I think Josh Ferristein's more truthful. I gotta be honest. Guided ideas that lead to radicalization. It is the responsibility of all Americans, of every faith, to reject discrimination. It is our responsibility to reject religious tests on who we admit into this country. It's our responsibility to reject proposals that Muslim Americans should somehow be treated differently. Because when we travel down that road, we lose. That kind of divisiveness, that betrayal of our values, plays into the hands of groups like ISIL. Muslim Americans are our friends and our neighbors our co-workers, our sports heroes. And yes, they are our men and women. Our sports heroes? I can't remember. I, I don't know any Muslims that play sports. Or I don't know any Muslims that are in the NBA or the NFL or the NHL or the MLB or the WWE. I don't, if, if I'm wrong, tell me. I mean, I could be wrong. I might be wrong. I'm, I'm, not, no, I'm not trying to Muslim bash or anything. I'm not, you know, if any Muslims are watching, I apologize. I'm not trying to Muslim bash. I'm just saying that I don't know too many Muslims that are, you know, so-called sports heroes. Now, if I'm wrong, let me know. You know, and, I, and, if, and if you prove me wrong, I will admit that I'm wrong. But I don't know too many Muslims that are so-called... When's the last time you ever heard of a Muslim winning an Olympic gold medal? women in uniform who are willing to die in defense of our country. We have to remember that. My fellow Americans, I am confident we will succeed in this mission because we are on the right side of history. I'm more confident than you, buddy. We were founded upon a belief in human dignity. That no matter who you are or where you come from or what you look like or what religion you practice, you are equal in the eyes of God and equal in the eyes of the law. Even in this political season, even as we properly debate what steps I and future presidents must take to keep our country safe, let's make sure we never forget what makes us exceptional. Let's not forget that freedom is more... Oh, come on. Now I'm starting to cut out. It's got like a minute left. I don't know. powerful than fear. That we have always met challenges, whether war or depression, natural disasters or terrorist attacks, by coming together around our common ideals as one nation and one people. So long as we stay true to that tradition, I have no doubt 
that America will prevail. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States. Okay, you heard it for himself. What do you think, people? Is he a fraud? Who do you trust more? Just Ferstein? Just Ferstein here! Or do you trust Obama? Who do you trust more? I caught this idiot in so many lies. So, uh... Comments below. Peace.